So this is the front of Skipton Castle, this is the main gate that you go through. Just got to go and get the tickets in a minute, so I just thought I'd give you a little view. This main tower first, the main gatehouse even. Got the old cannons outside there, with the rows on. Alright, so let's get our tickets and get in. You see all the seashells, seashells inside all the way around. seen in there is what Sir Clifford built with the seashells on the wall. You can see the main gate going out to the streets there. Before going in I just thought I would mention this here. Just have a little read of that. So on the 21st of December 1645 this gate witnessed a remarkable sight and it just basically says that the, this was the last castle in the north during the civil war to be held and the Royalist garrison marched away down Skipton High Street with colours flying, trumpets sounding, drums beating and they was allowed to discharge the weapons at the end. So even though they surrendered, they were still allowed to keep the dignity of the surrender. So now as you can see in front of me, this is Skipton Castle. Now this place has over 900 years of history. It's one of the best preserved medieval castles in Britain and I'm sure you can see by by what you're seeing now, it has. We have the little shop and tea room over there. There's a chapel over there, now, but it is it's quite uh, desolate now. There's no windows or anything inside. But this is the main castle. I'm going to get inside now. Have a little look round. I'll give you a bit more information as I go through. Two strange dog looking creatures on the tip of the door there. Looks like we've got some some of the mason marks here. And it says here <coughs> that this is a Norman arch. So this was built in the time of the Normans when they came to England. Look at that step there, how much war that's had. You see my foot there. So it's first brought me into the courtyard here inside, to this beautiful yew tree. Now this yew tree here was supposedly, let me just find the information, was planted in 1659 by Lady Anne Clifford. And it's remained here ever since, and it's absolutely huge. It's quite a nice addition really, so you have in the middle of a castle courtyard like this, you can see the crest on the walls there. There's quite a few different rooms that dart off here and there, so I don't really know where to start. I might just start in this one actually. When in doubt, go straight forward. So this looks like, yes, this is the kitchen. Does that one go anywhere? This perhaps, yeah, this looks like the storage for the kitchen. Let's go to the other side. Wine and beer cellars. This looks like an interesting shape for a room. Ah, so for many centuries this was used for storage of the castle documents. That explains, so the Cliffords, soon after King Edward II brought them into Skipton in 1310. Wow, this great strength enabled 300 men under Sir John Mallory to withstand a besieging by parliamentary forces for three years. And then that's what I was saying when we first came in with the honourable surrender that they did. Wow, look at these old, these old pieces of wood here. I wonder how original those nails are. They look like they could be. Very well could be. It's like an old possible stairway where you can't get up anymore. What's this one? What 
lovely view you could have had every day looking outside at that lovely tree. Not sure what this room is. Oh, the curing room. So this is where they would have smoked and salted the meat. We're standing through the hard winter times. An old sink there. I don't think that copper pipe was from the from the 1300s. <laughs> so yeah, we've been in that part. So we'll get on to the next room now. I think that's the one I've just come out of actually, yeah, with the curing meat and the storage. Let's go up to the top one. Oh wow. I think we've just come into the great hall. The banqueting hall. So it says that this was built in 1390 to 1450. Social centre for the medieval world. The great big feasting hall. Size of those antlers. I don't think they're real to be honest. No. Fortunately not. Oh, I've got some of the cannons in the rooms here. I'm presuming that this was a bedroom. Oh no, the withdrawing room. The parlour for the main living, living area for Lady Clifford and her children. Oh well, she would have had a very nice view. The river going through there. Let's try the next bit. This one, the Lord's Day Room, with a castle garrison, garrison of some 300, the Lord Skipton could afford little space for his own comfort. Oh right, okay. So this would have been for their personal use, while the soldiers would have been here. Another view out there for the tree. This is strange why they've put a door. Oh, there's a pathway to another room there. We'll have a look at that one in a sec. Just want to see what this is here. Oh, so they've blocked the entrance to that one off up there. There's another, another bedroom. The Lord's bed chamber. Now, I do remember from when I've been here before that that, that space at the top there links two bedrooms together, apparently. And the children used to use it for a crawl space to crawl through from, from their bedroom to the parents' bedroom. Something along them lines. From what I can remember, it's been quite a while since I've last been here. But that, that maybe would have been where the other room was through there. Got some steps down here. Wow, well, this is a nice room. Secret door. So it says on that plaque there that it's not known for many centuries what the castle was, this part of the castle was used for, possibly used to secure documents as well, but there was another room for that. So who knows what could have been kept in that one. As we get back to the main square now, where the tree is and carry on, so you don't have to see all the same stuff again. Oh, actually, we might just go down these stairs here now. There's a few people coming, so we'll have a look through down here. So this has took me back into the, the meat area and the kitchens. Let's, let's carry on somewhere else. So I've just come back into the withdrawing room just to give you a bit more information. And an interesting fact to know that Mary, Queen of Scots, was actually held prisoner in Skipton Castle for a while. And this would have been the room that she was in. So obviously it's not the exact same, but it's more or less the same view that she would have been getting. That was a crazy thought. Come back to the yew tree to start from here again. These, some of these stepway, stairways go to the bedrooms that I've just been in, I've just found out. So, I'll try somewhere different. Let's try this room here. Wow, what is that for? Is that to shut the gate that's next to it? Oh, 
Oh, this is strange, isn't it? Oh, look at this here. You can just imagine, can't you? You and your, you and your, your uh, partner. You know, like your fighting, your fighting partner. Sat here waiting. These pesky parliamentarians are going to come through these gates any minute. Got to be ready. <laughs> I don't know what this room was used for. Oh, here we go. There's a plaque here. So the Norman Fighting Chamber. The tower formed the southern bastion of the Norman Castle Gateway. Its arrow loops facing south as well. Like I've just said, yeah. Ah. So you'd be able to shoot back an invader who'd reach the courtyard. Very clever. this area. See the cobbled floors? That's very dark down there and you can't see what is, what's through there. Ah, I think that I have come into the dungeons. Let's have a look through this bit first. Oh, so this has been closed off as well. You can see the separate rooms here. There must have been a lot of little rooms that darted off that they've closed off. Maybe it's too dangerous now, possibly. This possibly could have had a could have had a door across. Keep people in there. But this is the dungeons. Let's have a look. I'll tell you what, it's very small. I'm having to duck down a lot here. Wow. The dungeon. Can you imagine being kept in here? There's a plaque on the wall that just read us coming in that says there was, there was never any escapes from here and you can see why. Imagine being stuck down here. The first time I came, the tour guide turned the light off and you got a real image of what it would have been like, but there's nobody about at the moment really to get that, that picture about it, but imagine being let down the stairs. Right, so get yourself in there. You're going to serve a 10 year term. Can you hear my voice echoing? Whoa. Look at that there. It looks like a Templar shield. There's the shield and the cross in the middle. That's great. Wow. Imagine if that was actually done by a prisoner. Also the great hall through there. This is the last bit we've got to explore. Two big fireplaces. Ah, so this is the medieval kitchen. So this one on the right would have had the big cauldrons brewing away a stew or I don't know, that kind of thing. Still see up there. I wonder if this is one of the old things that they used to dangle the pots off. Most important room in the house, the long drop. Put a, put a wee jobby down there. There's a bit of a long drop as well. I suppose you get a nice view though. What a strange place to have the toilet, right next to the kitchen. That's incredible. Sit on the, sit on the lap, I'll tell you a little story. So the castle is here like it is because in 1090 there was a Norman that was give, given this land and he built a very primitive wooden fort on here but it was repeatedly, repeatedly being attacked by the Scottish which, meant, which made it they have to build something like this. And as he's meant, it's heard me mention throughout the Clifford family who got this in, 19, in 1310, I hope that's right from earlier on, 1310, they've obviously made it to what it is now. An absolutely amazing castle and as I said this is one of the best examples of a medieval castle left in Britain now. Wow look at that, I didn't notice that as I was coming up. That wood carving there. So 
So what a fitting place to end the video. In the great banqueting hall. Come with me in here, sir. Roast the pig upon there. So I've come back to this little, this little part that's, that's in the dark, just to see what I can see, and I've brought my torch, so... I don't know how well you can pick that up down there, but... It definitely goes somewhere. Maybe another part of a dungeon, or... You know, something like that. I'd love to get down there to have a look, though. I'm just going to step into the chapel that is at Skipton Castle. The St John the Evangelist. Obviously, as you can see, it's in a very poor state. They don't actually know why it's been left to go to this state. Some believe that after Cromwell, they destroyed parts of it so that it, could, it couldn't be used as a siege platform. Others suggest that they used it as a stable, a coaching house. You can see the castle there through where the window would have been originally. Don't you dare do that on me, pigeon. But yeah, they don't actually know why it's left in such a poor state. It's a shame that it is left like this. Let's have a look at this little side piece here. So there was a little thing that I forgot to mention in the castle actually. So in 1292 King Edward I visited the castle and stayed there. Now in the in the wine and the beer cellars where you would you would have seen me mention that at some point through the video in them rooms. The two separate rooms now, but originally they would have been one large room. Now a few years later when they were doing restoration they happened to find five silver pennies hidden in one of the walls there. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Could the king have put them there? You know, who would have put them there? I can't imagine it being a poor person. Five silver pennies would have been a very, you know, a lot of money back in those times. It's just a little interesting fact for you there that they found. So now I think this is where we're going to finish the video for today. I hope you've enjoyed the little tour of Skipton Castle and what information I could give you. So after visiting Skipton Castle, there's a church on the grounds that I've come to visit. I'll just show you some of these beautiful windows that are in here, built in 1899 of St George and the Dragon. There's a few dotted around here that I'm going to show you now. It's a nice, nice little church. Get to the other windows, there's quite a nice one. Very interesting piece, built in 1798. Royal Crest of Scotland and England, Scotland being the unicorn and England and the lion. So this font here is 14th century, this 16th century Jacobean oak on the top of it. Now this is the last window I'm going to show you. This is in the memorial part for those who lost their lives in the Great War. Obviously this window is older than that, but it's just really nice. St George in the middle, St Oswald, St Alban. Joan of Arc is there on the right, St Martin on the left. So I just thought to finish off, I'd give you a little view of the outside of the church that you've just seen the windows in, the Holy Trinity of Skipton. Just give you a little view there, you can see the Roundhouse of the tower over there. So I'm back from Skipton Castle now, and I just thought to show you this little gift that is limited to Skipton Castle. You can't actually buy this anywhere else. Now this is made from the ancient oak beams that was in the ceiling of the castle that they removed when they did some restoration work in 1956. How amazing is that? The oak must be at least a thousand years old that this is carved from. What an amazing piece of history only found in that one place. Can't buy them anywhere else.